Goldersmith joins us now from Albany, New York. Author, activist, independent scholar, founder of the Comedy River Collective, and a kitchen table, Women of Color Press. Her latest book ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. 40 years of movement building with Barbara Smith. Her recent piece for the nation headlined How to Dismantle White Supremacy. Barbara Smith, welcome back to Democracy Now! As we talk about terrorism, talk about what we see in the United States. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be with you again, Amy. I actually was talking about something a bit different from what you just so uh, very uh, clearly framed in your introduction. I'm not just talking about white supremacist groups or organized white supremacy. What I'm talking about is a system that actually dictates and shapes every aspect of life in the United States from where your kids go to school and what kind of education they're able to get, what kind of housing you have, what your health care looks like, how often or much more often you die from COVID-19. I'm talking about the entire system. And I think that, of course, if we eradicate white supremacy and make that our priority and our goal, of course, we're going to get rid of the most extreme manifestations of white supremacy, which is organized white supremacist groups, violent terrorist groups. But I'm talking about uh, something even, I think, larger. So talk about that larger picture and talk about uh, the plan that you see uh, needs to be put in place in this country. Well, I started writing about white supremacy earlier this summer after George Floyd was lynched. I was so full of rage and pain because I've been dealing with this ever since Emmett Till was lynched in 1955. I was eight years old when that happened. So of course, I could not fully understand what had actually transpired. I just knew that the people in my family who were all from the Deep South, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, because they were part of the Great Migration. I just knew they were very, very upset about someone named Emmett Till and that this person was also a child like my twin sister Beverly and me. So as I said, I've been dealing with this for quite a long time. 1955 until the spring of 2020 and beyond. So I just thought I've got to write. I'm a writer. I just thought I've got to write about this. What motivated me was the fact that when people were talking about these issues, either in print or in um, media, uh, visual, you know, media, etc., that they never really talked about white supremacy. They would talk about race relations. They would talk about implicit bias. They would talk about uh, needing to reform uh, and change the culture of policing. All well and good. But they never talked about where all this mess comes from. And that's what I wanted to write about. Uh, in that first article, which appeared in the Boston Globe, it was an op-ed in the Boston Globe, I proposed what would it be like if we had a Marshall Plan, or a plan on the scale of the space race, to eradicate white supremacy. And when I was in contact then with uh, my editor at The Nation, they suggested, why don't you spin that out? And that's where the second article uh, evolved from.